Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, throw it away. All of it. Why are we even having a part three? What's up, you guys? Your girl Gigi is back. We're going to be talking about Love and Hip Hop Hollywood part two. Um, I did get a chance to review part one, um, but I I'm, I'm watched it, um, caught up on it. I wanted to talk to you guys and give you one more video before I left and went out of town. So I watched part two of Love and Hip Hop and we're going to discuss it. Honestly, you know, Fizz and April can get the business because they keep trying to play on people's intelligence and the shit ain't working. But don't forget to hit that subscribe button before we get into talking about this episode. And you know, make sure you keep supporting your girl. We're almost to the 1K mark. So everybody get into it and hit that subscribe button. Okay. All right, y'all. So let's talk about Love and Hip Hop. Basically, reunion picked back up. Um, on part two where we left off which was Jay Book and April you know going at it with each other basically you know April's like boy you need a hush trying to talk about me because I know some stuff about you so Jay Book is like okay empty the clip then you want me to say it for you and basically April's like you know there were a lot of other issues going on that involved Omarion's you know family members with some of the bandmates and we all know now, if you haven't heard yet, it was rumored that Jay Boog apparently was smashing Omarion's mom. You know, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But the way Jay Boog was saying on the stage was like, look, you know, everybody got problems with Omarion. You know, Fizz did, I did. Um, you know, everybody had their individual issues with him. So maybe that was his issue, um, you know, with Omarion. But Jay Boog's point is basically like, look, we don't give a fuck about y'all's relationship. Like, if y'all want to be in love, cool. But, you know, at least own up and be honest about it. So Nina takes that chance to be like, okay, look, you know, what is y'all's relationship? When did it, you know, be official? All that type of stuff. Fizz is like, man, we was just friends. You know, we didn't even put a title on it, you know, until after, you know, uh, the reunion tour. And everybody's like, nigga, nigga, please. This is y'all playing semantics. Y'all trying to play with people. You want to sit there and say, we didn't put a title on anything until you know after the tour but that doesn't negate the fact that y'all probably most likely was still cuddling fucking and sucking you know while everything was going on and it come to find out Tierra Marie got some tea about how apparently a year ago people saw you uh together with April at a damn hookah lounge now uh Monice comes back on stage and Nina asks Monice like does she believe this and she's like look I don't care I don't give a damn and I believe her. I, I, Monice is kind of like me. We are all about the principles and just the morals or stuff. Like, just give me basic level respect. And if you disrespect me on a point, like, I'm going to flip a lid. And we already know Monice, you know, a couple of screws ain't there. You know, the crayons ain't got all the colors in the box. That's all I'm trying to say about Monice, okay? That's what I'm saying. All the gears ain't turning. So you, all it takes is one little thing to set that bitch off. And obviously we saw it on stage because, you know, um, how, uh, what's his name? Jason Lee piped in talking about, you know, Fizz, you the only one who be thinking about April. I'm going to keep it real. You know, I do my job because Jason's in a weird spot. He, you know, reports the tea and stuff, but he has to keep his, you know, opinion out of it. But nonetheless, you know, of course people still feel kind of away. Like if I'm like, if I know you, I do like how you still gonna report tea on me. But he basically said, like, look, Fizz, like, don't nobody give a fuck. In April, I used to, you know, be cool with you, but you fake as fuck. And she's like, no, I'm not, April. Unfortunately, you are. Like, I mean, you kind of been known to just, like, kind of use people and, you know, hang around them when it's, you know, fortunate for you. And that's always, that's just, you know, the way Hollywood works. But Jason Lee put that bitch out there. We talking about, oh, yeah, you sitting there fake. We not, not to mention we always, uh... They blurted it out, but, you know, it was rumored that April was giving a little sloppy toppy to ASAP Rocky. <laughs> oh, Lord, that rhyme. Sloppy toppy to ASAP Rocky. Fizz, you might want to check your girl. You know, apparently now it came out something that she cheated on him. Uh, April, Lott, April Lott came to her defense, but nigga Fizz, don't be letting that bitch fool you. She got, she for everybody, for the streets, as everybody like to say. But I don't like the way they keep disrespecting Monice as if, like, she did so much shit to y'all. When y'all keep playing her, like, if I'm the mother of your kid, Fizz, I deserve basic level respect. You take my kid to Chicago, and you don't tell me that you with April. Now, if you her friend, and you had turned it to a romantic thing, now I deserve to know, hey, look, I was chilling with this girl, but I'm bringing my son around her now on a romantic level. I just want to give you that heads up. That's all Monice is asking for. But then other people are saying, like, Monice is asking too much of Fizz. Like, if y'all ain't in a relationship, you know, he's not responsible for doing that no more. You know, and in some aspects, 
Fizz may not be responsible for, for some of the things that Moniz is asking for, but you do it because you care for your son and you love your son. What good does it have? Is it for you to watch your son deal with the mother who is struggling with mental health issues? She calls to tell you, look, man, I'm not okay. My medication's not working. For some reason, I'm having a breakdown. Can you take him this week? And you say, no, my nigga, like, it's your week. Like, that's her problem to deal with. And, you know, Boogie had to pipe in, like, nigga, like, that's not affect nobody but Cam. Why would you leave him at home with a woman who's in the bathroom crying? And God forbid, you know, people who don't get medicated correctly, you know, something dangerous could have happened. Moniz could have, you know, tried to, you know, unfortunately take her life. Like, this shit is serious. Like, people do not take mental health so seriously. And for her, you know, it's like, okay, people say all the time, you know, we should be open to people, you know, being honest about the things that they're dealing with. But then the second somebody does it, y'all are ready to bash them, which is what Fizz does, you know. Monice has tried everything. She's like, I don't know what you want from my nigga. I don't know what the issue is. You want me to communicate with you. And then I try to, you know, do that, but you won't comply. And you're making it hard. I don't know why you hate me. And as the person that you laid down with, stuck your penis in, shot up the club, you know, you need to be there. That's all she's asking, Fizz. It's not that much to ask for. But like she said, every time you get a woman, every time you get a little puss in your corner, you want to act brand new and Fizz, you is not brand new. Honestly, you going after Moniz because you're an insecure ass man. You don't like where your career is at right now. You got that shitty ass song, Good Lotion, that you tried to freaking put out there. And you thought that she was going to pop off because you was this pretty light skinned nigga. You know, that all the girls love and B2K. But unfortunately, it's not like that for you no more. And then it's just, just, just throw more salt on the wounds. The fact that Omarion just released a goddamn Millennium Tour on your birthday. Like, bro, you was really feeling it right now and you trying to, you know, put all your pain into April. But another thing, too, April bragging all day about how Fizz was there for her. Oh, you know, he was there for me. You know, picked my child up when I told him I couldn't do it, took him to school. You know, if I needed to go to work, he would watch my baby for me. How are you doing that for a woman that's not even, you know, the mother of your kids? She bragging and saying all these good things about you, how you can take care of her and be there for her when she was going through depression, depression so much so she been crying every time your name even come up. But Moniece, the mother of your child, can't even get that much out of you? Like, Fizz, fuck out of here. That's all I got to say is fuck out of here. You and April, y'all keep trying to play. And then April want to be like, um, when Nina asked her, okay, you know, the pregnancy rumors and stuff. Now, the pregnancy rumors, Moniece said Omarion's, you know, team leaked it. Apparently, I guess, is best friends with her mom or something like that. I wouldn't doubt it. She, she said, Omarion got some files on Fizz. Now, Omarion, I'm going to need to drop some of that tea. What you got on nigga, homie? Because, I mean, obviously, with the whole divorce stuff going on, we all know Fizz's name was up in the files already. So, he might got some info on our nigga, okay? Um, but nonetheless, April wanted to turn it to, you know, oh, what am I supposed to do uh, when I say, oh, we're friends, but, you know, I, we're thinking about taking it a little bit further. You know, I, I, y'all don't deserve that from me. That's not what we're saying, but don't sit there and be like, make everybody try to feel dumb when we looking at y'all cuddling in the corner. And like, I know you see me see you over there and chemistry, you know, y'all might have been friends during the tour. But y'all was doing a lot more stuff than what just friends do, plutonic friends do. And be just because y'all didn't put a title on it doesn't mean it was wrong. So then Nina asked Fizz, okay, well, Fizz, do you think somebody's supposed to come to you or do you address them first? Oh, you know, we just friends. You know, it doesn't even go like that. Nigga, you know good and well that it was your responsibility to go to Omari and say, look, you know, me and April, we're friends, we're cool, but we're looking like it's going to go a little bit further. And the fact that we're possibly going to have to run into each other because our kids and all that type of stuff. You know, April could have told Omarion, but the fact that they're not on good terms and Fizz is on a little bit better terms, you know, than her, Fizz should have been the one to go over there and tell Omarion, point blank period, okay? Um, let me move on because Moniz, Moniz did get up and she ran after Fizz when he talking about, oh, you know, you sitting there, I'm not going to sit there and enable, enable you. You need to admit that you, you know, fucked up in the head and stuff, what she's doing. But when she's doing it, you sitting there down in her. He's trying to beat her down so much to be below his level because that nigga needs somebody to be worse off than him. That's it. And you want to push her so far that she will have to give you custody or that the courts will have to, you know, look at her as an unfit mother and say, okay, you'll have full, you know, custody. But why is it that you need to have full custody while she's gone? 
if she's gone, you know, you will automatically have Cam. So you want to take full custody because you know you'd be able to, you know, pull it like a puppet string, you know, for Moniz to make her jump through hoops because you legally got him. That's what it is. So let's move on to um, what happened after that. I think we have to talk about Yo-Yo. You know, Yo-Yo was, you know, back in the game. She's trying to come back after 30 years. Boy, did Yo-Yo have on the freshest God dang shea butter, cocoa butter, baby Johnson Johnson. The bitch was shining and like she was a roast turkey, chicken leg. I don't know what it was, but y'all don't look good. I actually like the short hair on her, but nonetheless, she was talking about how, you know, she got back into rap music. She had to find the balance between, you know, meshing the old with the new. Um, you know, Nina asked her about obviously about her yo yo school of hip hop, and she was like, you know, you know, doing that, I learned about how these kids, but these mothers didn't have some respect. You know, they don't respect, you know, the people who came before them. And, you know, the girls who's out here, you know, hoeing and tricking, they need to get out the game because that's not long lasting. You know, hoes is winning out here. They, you know, feel like they could do a, just open their way, lay legs wide open and they get sh shit paid for. And then the real women who be out here, you know, doing some work, we they come last. Like that, why it seemed like everybody who be trying to do real honest shit be coming last. And that shit is so annoying. You know, Brittany tried to put her little two cents in. Yeah, you know, the rap game is over-sexualized. And it seems like, obviously, sex sells. Kendall had to be like, girl, walk a fine line. Because, girl, on your um, IG, I see nothing but skin-tight clothes. And you really posting them booty-shaking videos. So, okay, watch it. And so, Brittany, you need to quit acting like you ain't, a, like, you not above all of it. Because you try so hard. You want to be accepted. You know, obviously the issues with your mama, I'm sure got a lot to do with it. But you are constantly down on other women and pretending like you all that. Like, you got to make yourself feel like you all that. Brittany, I honestly really don't like you because you're not honest with yourself. How are you going to sit there and be talking about Lyrica the whole season? That was your storyline. And then be pretending like you didn't. Like, you didn't have an issue with her. But... I'm going to need you to, something got to go with them hips. Sorry, girl, you as wide as a dump truck. It don't make no sense why you, BBS, Big Booty Syndrome. I used, my dad used to say that, and, and you know, when I was a kid, and, you know, we used to see, like, girls, when I started track, we had these little spandex. He said, please, make sure you, you know, what, we don't want Big Booty Syndrome. Thighs, hips for days, booty, like, girl, Brittany is out there in these streets with that ass. Um, and it needs to go somewhere, okay? I know that shit is weighing you down. It must be hard to walk, wake up in the morning with all that sagging behind you because Jesus take the wheel. Um, but nonetheless, Yo-Yo <clears throat> is saying that, you know, uh, it's going to be hard to, you know, get back in the game. But obviously she became a grandma this year too, but she's going to keep working. You know, the money don't stop. Her child is just going to have to understand, look, I'm going to work, but I'm going to come back home. We can talk about it then. But you know, a bag is a bag, a check is a check. I'm going to go get this coin. Uh, these lights got to stay on for somebody. Um, so then let's actually get into the Lyrica and Britney beef. Now, Britney is claiming, swearing up and down they were friends. We see a couple of pictures that her and Lyrica took. But I don't think it was like that, Britney. I think you felt like, you know, oh, because I hang out with her or we had a couple of, you know, instances where we ran into each other. Like, we cool. We know each other like that. But if I'm Lyrica and yeah, we took a couple of pictures, like, because I know you, like, bitch, we associates. We are only, you know, like, hanging out, hanging out buddies. Like, you're not my friend. You're not calling me to check up on me. You're not saying, like, and then she tried to say that she put food in Lyrica's mouth. That set Lyrica off. Because she's like, bitch, do you know who I wrote for? And then Brittany would be like, bitch, we don't want to go there. You know what I, what I do and stuff like that, who I write for. Like, girl, you tried so hard and see it put it correctly. Your whole storyline was Lyrica. Like, what the fuck are you here for? The only reason you were on this show is because you were mad at Lyrica. You could have apologized if you honestly see it was mad because, okay, here's where it all started. They met. Brittany and C were cool. They co-wrote um before, but another session, she asked Lyrica to. So Lyrica was like, cool, but she told Sia, obviously, because they met through her. And, you know, Brittany was being shady by not telling Sia, basically, about it. And, you know, she would say how, you know, Brittany would be like, man, you know, Lyrica won't talk to me. You know, I met her a couple more times, but every time I see her, you know, she act brand new. So she's like, man, that's not her. Like, you know, so she introduced her at a party. And then once Brittany, you know, got her foot in the door with Lyrica, it was like, uh, shoot, shoot Sia. 
And I could see that in Britney. She definitely was trying to use it as an opportunity. She wanted some relevancy. She wanted to be around Lyrica just to get, you know, some type of, you know, clout around her because that's an insecure ass girl, girl point blank, period. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, see you through that goddamn pillow at her though. Just two inches away from the face. She almost had it. She almost had it, girl. Um, but Lyrica and Britney just started yelling back and forth. So Nina had to cut it like, bitch, this ain't happening because... They were just going back and forth, basically, who better than who, who did what. Like, shit was annoying. Um, They wasted a lot of time on this show. Uh, So after that, they actually come back and they do a little segment with, um, uh, who else did they talk about? Uh, Oh, Moniz, Zell, and, um, not Moniz, uh, Paris, Zell, and Britney. So Paris, Zell, and Britney, we all know that they had to be, I mean, after Vegas, uh, speaking of Zell, Zell outed uh, April and Fizz because he took a picture of them in the bed. You know, Vegas was fun for everybody. Ray J went, Princess got mad at him. He like, shit, I went on a Sunday. Our daughter's birthday was on Thursday. Now, Paris, you can't, you not going to be one of the women who like make girls who have, oh, it's my birthday the whole week, bitch. We're going to celebrate your birthday on that day. And we might go out the next day at the club if your birthday fall on a weekday. But, bitch, you ain't gonna really have a whole week, you know, mess up my damn plans, work week, all that type of stuff. Like, now, Ray J, where you, you should have been more, you know, supportive to her and telling her what you were doing in Vegas. But he has some weed to get out there and brand. You know, Zell said he has some good stuff. Um, but nonetheless, after, you know, that, um, uh, Zell and Paris, you know, obviously their beef started when Zell took Paris to Britney's so-called event like that had a guest list and was this like uppity thing bitch y'all were at a bowling ring that was no motherfucking guest list at no bowling ring that was an open thing and you might have been the host of it so you felt like you had a little bit you know of authority but oh i didn't invite paris like bitch don't don't do me don't do me okay and paris is with the shits okay she is ttg train to go she might look like a jack o <laughs> Brittany said, uh, Paris, you look like a jack-o'-lantern. Hold on, focus camera, come on. Thank you. Um, yeah, she said Paris look like a jack-o'-lantern. That was not a good dress, Paris. It just wasn't. It was half prom, half Kinsieta. Bitch, you didn't know what you wanted to do. You got one titty hanging out like Nicki Minaj. It was a lot. It was a little bit merch. But, uh, Paris basically told her, like, girl, you're not going to do me. And, you know, she was being shady. Brittany admitted to it, you know, talking about the whole Uber thing and how, um, you know, but you, uh, how did you get here in the Uber, bitch? You took on K Michelle's, you know, beef with her because you needed something else to be, you know, on the show besides Lyrica. Like, you will want to be. That's all it is. You reaching for the stars and, bitch, you grabbing air. That's all it is. Uh, but Paris, Paris let her know, like, bitch, you can catch these hands. You want to have that same energy with Lyrica come at me like that. You know, meet me in the back if you want it, okay? Meet me in the trail. It's going down, okay? It's going down. That's. Britney. Now, who who y'all got your money on? Britney or Paris? I don't know. It'd be a good one, though. It would be a good one. Uh, but Zell, you know, Britney called Zell a, a, a verbally abusive to women. Does he talk, you know, extra aggressively and is rude, hella rude and shady? Yes. Do I think it's specifically towards women on purpose? No. I think that's just his personality. Um, I don't want, like, this whole huge divide of, like, oh, you know man can't talk to a woman like that like yes men don't need to be disrespecting women but I don't think like he should be like targeted as like this oh you know the gay man who always is after you know you know women like that um but I think after that I don't think I really missed anything y'all this reunion kind of was just like a wash and then now they're gonna have a part three after you know Paris and Brittany get it to it um towards the end and Nina had to shut it down because you know security was coming up because Finally, both of them got up. Now, we don't want to be real on the bus when uh, Britney so-called called herself apologizing to uh, to Paris. Britney got, I mean, uh, Paris got Britney's ass. She was slow. Paris was with it, okay? And she threw that drink and had it. Britney did not know what to do, okay? Um, So, I think, you know, she could get it for real. Um, What else happened after that? Nothing, honestly. Oh, we got to talk about Kay Michelle, her little surrogacy thing. Um, you know, Kay Michelle, obviously, is trying to get into the country music industry. It, it's going to be hard, especially after she dissed all them white people like that. Um, but, you know, that's her passion. She gonna do it. Um, in regards to her surrogacy, I'm so glad she got a new one. 
Because I knew from the jump street, I could already tell, like, that was going to be an issue. As much as that girl was trying to say, like, she was cool and, you know, she knew what she had to do was only going to be a job for her. I could definitely tell that she was, you know, ready for whatever was going on, her little 15 minutes that came after it. And for the fact that her nigga tried to have a nerve to be like, you need to get a contract. Nigga, these eggs ain't even about to get implanted in you. What the hell are you talking about? He was really trying to reach. He was trying to, you know, make sure he got the bag. That's all he was trying to do. And, but we, but like K. Hey Michelle said, I met that bitch in Ikea. What else do I expect but ghetto-ness? The nigga tree of it all. The nigga tree. Um, but she, you know, said this is going to be her last round of IVF. And, you know, whatever God, you know, has in plans. If she has the kids, cool. But if she doesn't, you know, that's, you know, what she's going to go with. Because obviously IVF is a rough process. Um, and I laughed at the joke when, you know, Nina was like, well, you know, what do uh, K Michelle, what do you think about, you know, merging the world? Or ask A1, what do you think about K Michelle merging the world? She's like, yeah, you know, only if she go through me. I said, skirt. A1, you got a few hits. I mean, you got a couple on your belt, but nigga, you ain't no writer like that. You And K Michelle said, you know, I ain't gonna dish your little, you know, gift or nothing, but for country music, I'm gonna have to, you know, go to somebody else for that. Uh, but that was kind of the, you know, the reunion. It was basically all, you know, Fizz on these April BS. I'm not going to sit there and allow Fizz and April to keep trying to play us like that. Y'all was fucking the whole time. Y'all just wasn't telling nobody. And you tried to keep it under wraps. But because y'all can't keep y'all hands to y'allself, people saw it. And just because you didn't put a title on it doesn't mean the shit wasn't foul. Fizz, you needed to tell your baby mama and Omarion. But he got back at you because now here you are stuck again. No money in your pocket. Bought a brand new ass house and I bet that bitch is going to go into floor closure anyways. Because ain't neither one of y'all making money like that unless you, you know, you decide to, you know, put April out there and haul herself out again. You know, because she loved patting her puss on the IG. You know, her and Evelyn got that in common, I guess. Um, and Monice, go get you some help and let this be the last season. Girl, I really, y'all, Monice looked good as fuck this reunion. She looked hella good. The, the makeup, the outfit, everything was on point. Um... But you need to, you know, go and get yourself some serious, you know, relaxation. You know, get you a nice little spa day. Talk to a therapist, girl, and work it out for your son. Uh, and like Book said, you know, some some family therapy wouldn't hurt either because y'all need to work through that shit um, fast, quick, and in a hurry. And Fizz, you need to remember that you're going to be an example for your son. And he's going to see this shit. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at that. So that was the re part two reunion. I uh, appreciate you guys for watching. You know, don't forget to follow your girl on Twitter at gg.0321. Um, and if you know you want to donate to your girl, you know, I do got my little cash app description in the bottom. A couple of dollars wouldn't help. It's going to go back to you guys anyways. You know, anytime y'all invest in me, it's going to be investing in y'all. Okay, we're going to get a whole new brand, new setup and everything. All right. Um, I'm going to be in Dallas, so hopefully I will be able to, you know, review Black Ink Crew and give that to you guys, but I'm going to be, you know, going out of town, so possibly, hopefully I will be able to get that done, but I just want to, you know, give y'all one last review before I head out, um, you know, for the Christmas break, and I hope all of you guys have a great holiday, drink a bunch of, you know, rum infused eggnog, and have a lot of, you know, Christmas cheer, and I will, you know, see you guys later, Merry Christmas everybody, I will catch you guys on the flip side, deuces.